to get going here. Of course, I got an update from Wind uh, suggestion from Windows right as I went live. Nelson, what is up? Can you hear me? I want to make sure this is working okay. Um, yeah, I'm doing Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts for now. Um, I don't know if we'll stay doing this the whole time, but honestly, this live stream is going to be a little different than most. This one's really going to be much more about interacting with you guys than it is about gameplay. So as someone suggested, this is probably about the easiest game I could play as far as not having to pay a lot of attention to it. So um, ideally... For a live stream, I probably would have done Victory at Sea Pacific because it seems to be the hot game on the channel right now. Uh, but I felt like I wouldn't have been able to do justice to that game while live streaming today. Oh, Russians. <laughs> that's just what, it, when I hit the clear button, that's what it went to was the Russians and the Chinese. We could certainly do that. It doesn't really matter a whole lot to me what we do. I'm just going to kind of pick something random and go with it. Uh, this is mostly about doing a Q&A and kind of an interactive time with everyone. So if you're in here and you're watching, go ahead and uh, say hi and let me know where you're watching from. Even if you've been here before, say it again for all the folks who might be going uh, in here for the first time. 30 transports versus two battleships. It, unless I'm the two battleships, it wouldn't be a whole lot of fun. I mean, we could. I guess we could sit and watch it because uh, I can't control transports. But I guess that's okay. I don't know. Let's go to like 1915. I wonder how this will even work. Yeah, you know what? Let's go all the way back to the earliest time period for this. And then that way, hey, Nicola, welcome back. Good to see you again in Croatia. Um, so this is probably a good, good way for me to have something going on the screen that's fun for you guys. Um, but also gives me the chance to do a Q&A for a little bit because I can't actually control these transports. So let's do it. Gary Silverman, welcome. And I see the little badge and that tells me that you must have joined as a member. I don't get notifications when that happens. So unless I remember to go in and check myself, I don't always see it. Nathan, welcome. I don't know. You interact a lot with the channel, but I can't remember whether or not you've been in a stream before. So it's great to see you. Um, Moorhead City, North Carolina. I have been there, Robert. Love that place. I think I've mentioned that before. Manchester, England. Okay, you got to let me know. Are you Man City or United? Which team do you support? Artorias. My son is a huge Man United fan. Army Chow Main, I've got your question ready to go. We're going to do it in just a minute here. All right, so I'm not going to actually be controlling this. It's 30 Russian uh, transports against two battleships. I don't even know what these guys can do as far as firing back. Do they have anything at all? No, they don't. They can't even fire back, can they? Well, that's actually no fun then, is it? Let's try something different. How about torpedo boats? Niall, it's going well. How about yourself? Indianapolis, oh yeah, one of my favorite cities. Brian, sorry, it doesn't appear, appear that that actually works because the transports don't have any way to fire back. So um, how about we do a slew of torpedo boats and see if they can take down two of these guys. Dryer Whisper, hello. All right, let's see what these guys can do. I'm going to put them all on AI. Just let them do their own thing, and we'll see if they can actually compete. We'll watch this from the perspective of the Chinese battleships. It's a little easier that way. And then I want to start getting to some of the Q&A once we can actually see the battleships, that is. As I was mentioning at the top, for those of you who weren't in here yet, ideally, I think the best game right now for a live stream would be Victory at Sea Pacific because it seems to be the hot game on the channel. But um, 
I wanted to dedicate this live stream to more interaction and kind of doing a Q&A with you guys, uh, which we're going to get to here in a minute. So I didn't want to have to do too much with having to interact with the game. So I thought I'd go with something that was pretty easy for me. Oh, 10, VT, uh, 10 Cruiser Light Battle. We could certainly do that. Gotcha, Nathan. Well, I hope you're all is well for you and everyone as well. Oh, you, Oh man, Artorias, you live in Manchester and you're a Liverpool fan. Well, it's a good time to be a Liverpool fan. My goodness, they're having an outstanding season. It's got to be frustrating for Liverpool fans to have everything stopped like it is right now. I myself am a uh, fan of a championship level team right now. I'm a West Brom fan. It's where my family's from. So, so all right, let's go ahead and watch this. I think my sound's turned off, so I gotta. That's weird. I'm not hearing any sound. Interesting. Can you guys hear any sound for the game? I'm not hearing any. Kind of interesting. I'll have to fix that. Uh, let's hit my function button for a second here. Yeah, uh, Victory at Sea Pacific, definitely buggy. All right, I want to do something here for a second. I actually have to, I think, go in over here. Let's see. There we go. All right, where were we? You hear the sound of silence? <laughs> yeah, it seems about right. Kind of weird. We have no sound at all on the game. Very strange. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Well, we'll uh, we'll fix it after this. I want to get to some of the Q uh, Q and A here. Um, if the torpedo boats win, I'll donate ten dollars. Come on, torpedo boats! All right, let me get to the um, oh the sound of the water in the background now. I am in the basement, and I'm about ten feet away from the sump pump in the basement and it has rained like crazy here in ohio today so you might hear a little bit of the water sound from the sump pump um all right so let me get to some of the q a and we'll fix the sound uh we'll figure out what the sound issue is in the game there was an update to the launcher on the game uh, right before i started so i don't know if that has something to do with it uh let me check my software real quick and see yeah, it says no desktop audio at the moment. So let's see if we can fix that real quick. I bet that's our issue. Sometimes I have to close out of the streaming software and do it all over again. I don't want to have to do that right now. So I guess we'll just do it this way for the moment. You heard dishes? <laughs> My wife might have been, or my daughter might have been putting dishes away upstairs. All right, let me get to the Q and A. Uh, Army Chow Main. I actually, first, I have a couple of uh, of things I need to mention. Um, giveaway winner. Uh, since we hit twenty thousand subscribers, uh, we did draw another winner for the uh, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts giveaway. We had our first American winner. That's the fourth one of these giveaways that I've drawn. Um, so our first American winner. And uh, let me just double check his name to make sure I got it right. Ben uh, Witt. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Witto Witt, W-I-T-T-E. Uh, looks like the first one of the torpedo boats sank. Is our winner. And he said he's never won anything like this before. So he was pretty excited when I reached out to him. Giveaway has begun. The link's in the description of this live stream. So you guys can click on that and enter it. Uh, when you get a chance to do that and we will draw the next winner when we hit 21,000 subscribers on average right now that seems to be happening about every three weeks we add an additional thousand subscribers which is amazing because two and a half years into this channel I had 4,000 subscribers so uh, about this time last year I think we were maybe five or six uh, Niall I will at some point do a uh, live stream for Victory at Sea Pacific just not the one I'm going to be doing today um, so, so BFA, sorry, not not you, Ben. 
Um, the Ben that I'm talking about, I've already connected with him. He's already got the the uh, unlock code and everything. I sent it to him. I confirmed that with him before I started the live stream. Uh, also, a couple of things. I made uh, some updates to the Patreon um, rewards to reflect the current games that I'm playing. Um, so among those rewards now is the ability to uh, name a ship in Victory at P Sea Pacific. I had to go in and confirm that you can, in fact, name those ships, and you can. So uh, the folks that are at, I think, I think at $5 and up, you can name a cruiser or a destroyer. Uh, and I think it's either $10 or $15. You'll have to look um, and up. Uh, you can name any ship uh, in that series. So uh, if you are currently a, a patron, go over there and check out the latest rewards because I have updated some of those things. There's other stuff as well, but I just wanted to highlight that some changes have been made to reflect the games that I'm currently playing so that I'm making sure that I'm giving you. As always, if you have suggestions or ideas for those rewards, and I'll be updating um, the YouTube memberships to reflect that as well. The the five and ten dollar memberships will be the same as the five and ten dollar rewards on Patreon. Um, so I will update those after we're done with the live stream to reflect those same rewards. Um, so um, okay, the other thing. Um, one of our patrons, one of our longtime supporters of this channel, uh, Andrew, suggested, he's been asking me for a long time, probably for several months now, if I would do a Amazon wish list. And I was really hesitant to do that because, I don't know, it, can't, it seemed a little selfish to me to say, hey, buy me stuff on Amazon. But, but he's been asking and asking and asking, asking. So I thought, you know, there's a couple of things I could use for the channel. I put a couple of things up on there and the links in the description for that as well. I've never done that before. I don't know how it works. Uh, it doesn't appear that these battleships are taking any damage. So I don't expect these torpedo boats are going to do a whole lot unless they can get some torpedoes in the water real quick. Um, oh, Brian, that's actually, that reminds me. That's another one of the updates that I added to Patreon. I believe it's at the $15 and a month level, uh, a month and up level. Uh, you can pick once a month, uh, in addition to some other stuff, uh, you can pick a scenario uh, or a custom ship or whatever it is that you want uh, here on Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, and I will make a video for that scenario. Now, that's not to say that those of you who make requests and have suggestions that I won't still do those, but I want to give first priority to the folks who are supporting the channel through Patreon, and I thought that was an additional way I could do that. So thank you, Brian, for bringing that up. That reminds me of that. Um, so let me go ahead and get to some Q&A, and I know a couple of you have already done that, so um, I want to get to Army Chow Main because he sent me a question through Patreon. I'll answer that, and then I'll, I'll catch up on the chat and see if any of you guys have um, uh, any questions because I see a couple of them up there. Uh, Army Chow Main asked me, what are some areas of the world I would like to visit? Are there any places that are restricted that I would like to visit, and if so, why? Um, you've probably heard me mention this before, but definitely number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five on my list is the UK. Um, we are hoping someday to get there. Um, I was working full time for Rachel's Challenge for a while, and we thought we were finally going to be able to save up the money to take a family trip to the UK. Um, but uh, eliminated that full time position. And now Corona has hit, and financially we're just not at the place we could do that right now. But when we are, that's absolutely going to be the place that we go when we're able to. I want to see London. I definitely want to see Birmingham because that's where my family came from. Uh, we're going to go to Glasgow, which my, I had family who lived there for a time, with Scotland. Uh, so that's definitely first on my list. There's a lot I want to see in London. I want to see the, uh, uh, the Belfast. I want to see the Tower of London. I want to take the Jack the Ripper tour. I want to see... Windsor Castle, Westminster Abbey, you name it, I want to see it. Uh, so that's definitely number one on my list. Where else would I like to go? I'd love to go to Germany. I've got a good uh, friend, a dear friend of mine, who's uh, hopefully going to go to Germany this fall if he's able to with Corona and everything. I'd love to see Germany. A lot of my family came from there. I'd love to see the Holy Land, uh, Jerusalem, uh, that whole area. That would be incredible. Egypt would be amazing. Uh, there's a lot of places I would love to go if I ever had the chance. Um, so thank you for that question, Army Chow Main. Um, somebody asked the question, where to, did I go to university? Well, um, it's interesting because 
I've got a uh, quite the history when it comes to my education. When I graduated from high school, uh, I initially went to a small school that's about 40 minutes from me. It's in Greenville, Pennsylvania. It's called Teal College, spelled T-H-I-E-L. Uh, and I was a history and secondary education major. My goal was to be a history teacher. Uh, my sophomore year in college, I left that. Um, decided to go into ministry. I've actually spent most of my adult life, hey, there's a big torpedo hit. Hey, we might have something here. Um, Spent most of my adult life uh, in uh, church ministry um, as a youth pastor, as a worship leader, um, things like that. And uh, I'm actually now going back to school to get my history degree. Uh, So I'm actually currently um, studying at Ohio Christian University to get in my history degree. So uh, hopefully have that in a couple of years. So thank you for that question. Uh, yes, Peak 101. I, I will always pr- pronounce Birmingham the right way. Um, I, I pride myself on trying to pronounce uh, English words correctly. So I know it's Leicester, not Leicester. Uh, I say Buckingham and Birmingham. I know that D-E-R-B-Y is Darby. Um, I don't have them all down, but the, those ones I, I try to get the best I can. Um, up to Lemon, yes, I am really excited about Grand Tactician Civil War. Super excited about that. That looks really promising. I hope it lives up to the hype. Uh, I saw they have alpha of the game now. I'm hoping they'll have a playable version soon. I believe as soon as they do, I will be one of the first ones to get it. Uh, at least that's what my understanding. So we'll see. Um, if you typed a question and I didn't see it, please put it out there again because I'm just now catching up with the chat and I'm really behind on that. So please feel free to type your questions again if I didn't see it the first time. Uh, from the depths, Train Master, no, I haven't seen that one. Um, if not, you would really recommend it. Oh, that's interesting. I'll have to check that out. Somebody else recommended to me. I saw there's a new first-person shooter that looks really cool and supposed to be really realistic. Uh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head the name of it. I think they just came out with a chapter three for it. Wow, look at this battleship. It's really listening there. Um, I can't remember right now what it is, but somebody will mention it. What about Birmingham, Alabama? <laughs> yeah, I've been there too. Um, I love Alabama. I've been a couple of times uh, for events that I spoke at, uh, up uh, actually up near Huntsville. Huntsville's a cool city. Uh, that's where uh, Space Camp is. And they've got a museum there that's really cool to check out. How's the other one doing? Oh, we're getting both of them. Look at that. We might win this. Oh, Brian, you're going to owe me 10 bucks. The British Museum. Yes, I definitely want to see the British Museum. That would be very cool. HMS Nelson Atlantic Fleet. I want to play it. Niall, how's my grandma doing? Uh, thank you for asking. Um, I just talked to my grandpa uh, a couple of days ago it sounded pretty certain we were going to lose her um, for those of you who aren't familiar um, I was raised by my grandparents my grandparents were in their 30s when I was born um, so I when I was born my grandma was only 34 years old uh, she was 17 when she had my mom my mom was 17 when she had me uh, so I was raised by my grandparents my grandma's uh, for all intents and purposes she is my mom uh, she's got the COVID-19 virus she's also got um Parkinson's and Lewy body dementia. She's been in a long-term care facility the last couple of years. My grandpa, who's 80 years old, just can't care for her full time the way that she needs. So she's one of uh, close to 20 uh, patients at that facility that has the virus. And uh, her temperature spiked and she was not doing well. Um, she wasn't responsive. And it seemed pretty sure we were going to lose her, but they were able to take her to the hospital a couple of days ago. And last report, we can't go see her there. Uh, because of the virus but last report i heard she was starting to wake up she was starting to do better Uh, so if you are the kind of person who believes in the power of prayer as i do please pray for my grandma her name's connie we would greatly appreciate that Um, all right let's see let me catch up on questions jason right thank you for the question or for the congrats i appreciate that uh, very happy about it. My my daughter's going to be live streaming right after me. She's live streaming at 5 o'clock, so we'll have to wrap up before that. Um, she's at 113,000 subs and counting, so we're very excited for her as well. Thank you, Nelson. And uh, All right, let's see. 
this. I'm just catching up on things here. Let's take a look. William, I'm really sorry to hear that um, about your grandma. Brian, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, I think this is uh, going pretty well for these. Torpedo ships at the moment. Epic Games. Are you Brian? I mean, yeah, not Brian. Yeah, is it Brian? Ben. I'm sorry, Ben. Jason. Oh, Jason, you want uh, you want my daughter and I to do? We did uh, on her live stream the other day. We did. Um, we did the uh, the one song from Hamilton. My daughter and I did the duet. Um, it's the one where they challenge each other to the duel near the end. Is the battleship running away? I don't think the battleship's going anywhere at the moment. It's uh, it's going five knots. I don't think it's getting anywhere, and these last couple of torpedoes that come in are going to finish it off. Brian, I know you're Brian. <laughs> All right, there it is. 20 torpedo boats easily took care of those two battleships. Hey, Georgia Farman, if you got to fall asleep, you know, do what you got to do. You know what I mean? All right, let me go. Let me so, go see if I can grab my daughter and we'll do this uh, Hamilton thing for you. Give me one second. All right, she's coming down, so um, grab a... Where's the chair? Where's the other chair? Oh, your mother had it over there. Go grab it. I don't need it. You don't need the chair? Okay. I don't need a chair. All right, you got it pulled up on your phone, the lyrics that you need there? You say that like I need them. I know, I know. I don't either, but it's good to have them when we're doing this. So who am I going to be? Am I going to be... It doesn't matter. I'll be Burr again. How's that? Okay. All right, so I can say this stuff on my channel sure. that I couldn't say on yours. All right, guys, we're going to do this. This is my daughter, Rachel, a.k.a. Gory Gaming 24601 wow. who has a channel five times larger than mine. So, oh, um, yeah. That's a thing. So we had a request from Jason to do um, the. this is the song Your Obedient Servant from Hamilton. Uh, this is where they uh, start going back and forth, and it ends up in a duel. So uh, thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. Um, anyway, um, here we go. Uh, let's see, how does Hamilton, an arrogant, immigrant, orphan, bastard, whore's son, somehow endorse Thomas Jefferson, his enemy, a man he's despised since the beginning, just to keep me from winning? I want to be in the room where it happens, the room where it happens, the room where it happens. You've kept me from the room where it happens for the last time. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Dear Alexander, I am slow to anger, but I toe the line as I reckon with the effects of your life on mine. I look back on where I failed, and in every place I checked, the only common thread has been your disrespect. Now you call me immoral, a dangerous disgrace. If you got something to say, name a time and place face to face. I have the honor to be your obedient servant, A. Burr. 
Mr. Vice President, I am not the reason no one trusts you. No one knows what you believe. I will not equivocate in my opinion. I have always worn it on my sleeve. Even if I said what you think I said, you would need to cite a more specific grievance. Here's an itemized list of 30 years of disagreements. Sweet Jesus. Hey, I have not been shy. I am just a guy in the public eye trying to do my best for our republic. I don't want to fight, but I won't apologize for doing what's right. I have the honor to be your obedient servant, A. Ham. Careful how you proceed, good man, intemperate indeed, good man. Answer for the accusations I lay at your feet, or prepare to bleed, good man. Burr, your grievance is legitimate. I stand by what I said, every bit of it. You stand only for yourself. It's what you do. I can't apologize because it's true. Then stand, Alexander. Weehawken. Dawn. Guns. Drawn. You're on. I have the honor to be your obedient servant. A dot ham. A dot burr. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Rachel. Are you going to thank that Oh, person? yes. James, thank you. My, we, <laughs> we were in the middle of the song, and she's like tapping me on the shoulder trying to point out that, that I had a big donation. And I, thank you, Jason, uh, James. I appreciate he that. said, watch your language. Watch my language, Dad. Yeah, sorry. What the heck? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's swear. It's not, it's not really a swear. Wow. It's... Well, you gotta keep it clean for the children. Mm. You Thank you, James. So Appreciate that. Watching your channel. All right. Back to uh, what we were doing. So my daughter and I are both really into musical theater. Um, I had a lead in the musical in high school and she had the, one of the leads in her high school play this year. Unfortunately, um, the whole Corona thing hit about a week and a half before the play. So they didn't get to do it. So, all right, back to this. So, um, yeah, uh, we're, we're really into Hamilton, obviously <laughs> with the history involved and everything. Um, Graham, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, all right. So let's do something else. Yeah. I don't think we're going to have sound because I think in order to get my sound work and I actually have to shut down my software and reboot it and that I would have to stop the stream to do that. And I don't want to do that. So um, I got burned by my daughter. Yeah, but remember who won that duel. I'm just saying, you know. For a man of La Mancha. Oh, boy, now we're getting requests. Uh, I am my Don Quixote, the man of La Mancha. Yeah. All right. Um, Jason, very cool. So guns, lots of guns, right? Guns and ships. Oh, that that's actually one of my favorite songs from... Uh, from Hamilton. Okay, we're gonna make an Italian ship this time. I actually, um, you play viola for musicals. That is awesome. Do a Jutland. I can't do Jutland. You know how many ships were at Jutland? There's. I actually thought about trying to do a Jutland, and it just was was nowhere near possible. Um, we are gonna do though, um, just to get something going, so we can have something while I'm continuing the Q and A. Um, we'll do Italians versus Germans, 1930. Uh, and let's do a 10v10 battle cruiser duel. And we'll just watch the fun. So if you have questions, we're doing a Q&A here. So go ahead and throw out your questions. And I'm going to try to uh, uh, to get to those. Uh, the, mainly the focus of this, of this live stream is to interact, do Q&A. It's really not so much about the gameplay today. So... All right, here we go. We're just gonna put them on uh, on AI and watch the fun. And see who wins. And uh, if you just joined us, my apologies. Uh, the sound is not working for the game at the moment, but that's okay because we're doing a, a live stream. So we'll just see what happens. We'll follow the Capitana for now. Ten dollars. Germans winning. <laughs> oh, I am not a betting man. But it wouldn't surprise me. I would expect that the Germans would win, all things being equal. Um, Battle of Denmark Strait, I have done before, but I, I'm going to revisit it now that we have uh, a lot of new things added to the game. Um, a lot of updates since I did the Battle of Denmark Strait. Um, so, anyway, back to, uh, yeah. Uh, the game is definitely unoptimized for so many ships. 
Um, back to Q&A. So if you have any questions for me, it doesn't have to be about history. It doesn't have to be about gaming or the channel. It can be about anything at all. So throw your questions out there. What is my favorite warship in general? Oh, boy. Um, mm, I got to go with Bismarck. I just, I just think, you know, I, I tend to be kind of biased toward German in general not their ideology please don't mistake me for saying that um but i just have always been fascinated by the german culture and um the language and the country so yeah i think the the bismarck boy this ship's getting lit up right now uh somebody said what's the air speed velocity of an unladen swallow well that depends uh, african or european swallow uh einar thank you for that i appreciate that No, no carriers here. How does one define battle cruiser? Well, I mean, battle cruisers were all about that combination of speed and big guns, but not a lot of armor, I guess you would say, right? You love turtles? Uh, turtles are cool. We, you know, a couple of months ago, we had a huge turtle show up in our driveway i mean it was a snapping turtle and the shell was probably it had to be 14 inches from front to back this shell was a big turtle uh and, and it was just kind of hanging out in our driveway it rained real bad for a couple of days my favorite general admiral military leader um well i've, I've said this a lot right now and i can't believe honestly that i'm saying this because six months ago, I would never have thought myself saying this, but I've got to go with Ulysses S. Grant. Not because I think he was the best general, but it's a fascinating guy. Incredible story, and I think he was a first-class human being. He's just one of those people that I would love to have been friends with. I would love to have hung out with. He just seems like a really decent guy. Um, and he probably could have used some better friends than some of the ones that he had. Uh, who took advantage of him. So uh, I, I, I'd have to say right now my favorite is Grant. Uh, I've always been fascinated by Rommel. Uh, Patton is a really cool dude. Um, he, he fascinates me a lot too. Not None of those guys are perfect. They all had their flaws, certainly. Would I ever go on board a nuclear power submarine given the chance? Yeah, but briefly <laughs> and on the surface. Um, I... I I wouldn't say that I'm claustrophobic, but I could never serve on board one of those things. I give those guys a lot of credit for what they do. Oh, no, no thank you. Nael, I am proud of you. I, you are here for every single stream. You are so incredibly supportive of this channel. So I love having you around, Nael. You're only what? You're like 13, right? And yes, Army Chow Mein, and he got himself on the 50 note. Not a great president, um, but he did some really good things during his presidency. Um, but Grant's biggest flaw, obviously, number one, was his, his alcoholism. Um, but it wasn't as bad as a lot of people say. Um, he, he loved his family so much and wanted so desperately to be able to spend more time with, him, with them that he constantly fell victim to get rich quick schemes because he thought it would help him to get out of the army so because he, he spent years apart from his family when he was in the army in his early days um and, and that continued on into his presidency where he kind of fell victim to um people who took advantage of him um you know something i didn't know about grant's presidency he tried really really hard to get the united states to annex the Dominican Republic and it almost happened. I never knew that before I, I studied up on him. Can I show us the German line? Yes. You guys might hear some sirens in the background. Um, our next door neighbor, his name is Mitchell and uh, Mitchell's 16 and a great kid. Um, he's got his 16th birthday and uh, his father was a police officer who passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, from ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. And uh, so like the fire department and the police and everybody are doing like a drive-by to celebrate his birthday. So you might hear the sirens outside uh, upstairs uh, because they're driving by for Mitchell's birthday. So happy happy birthday, M Mitchell. So boy, there's a lot of shells coming in on this side.
Yeah, Nicola, um, History Channel's actually got a thing coming out about Grant soon, I saw. Um, they did one on Washington recently, and I guess they're doing one on Grant, and I think it's going to be based on Ron Chernow's biography, which is the one I just read, which I highly recommend if you're interested in biographies of famous people at all. Now, do I like Victory at Sea Pacific? Yes. Yeah, it's flawed. It's bugged. And I'm not real far into it yet, but yeah, so far I'm enjoying it. I love kind of sitting behind some dive bombers and watching them go in to get the hits. I can't wait to get into a, a fight with carriers, which I think is probably going to come in my next episode because I, I think there, there are those carriers up near Midway that I'm going to have to go deal with. George, uh, what is the future of Ultimate General Civil War? I will return to it at some point. Um... I think probably a legendary campaign on the Union side using the latest version of the J&P Rebalance mod because uh, that would probably give a very different um, experience than my last legendary campaign. Um, maybe after we get through uh, playing the A-Gods uh, Civil War II, once I do that, maybe we'll go back and do some more uh, Ultimate General Civil War. Brian, thank you. You're going to send me a Germany uh, meme on Instagram? Cool. I'll have to see that. So, so far the Germans are doing pretty well here. Man, there's a lot of shells coming down on this thing, but eh, it's taking some damage. Who was my favorite Roosevelt and why? Um, oh boy, that's tough. Um, and then Army Chow Main, I'll get to your question here in a second. Um, and I see a couple of other ones there. I want to make sure I get to those. So I'm going to actually scroll up a little bit to make sure I don't um, miss these. Wow. Um, I would have to say Teddy. Uh, listen, I Franklin Roosevelt was a great leader. Um, I don't always agree with some of the political decisions that he made. Um, but great leader, uh, and I think he was the right guy for the time in World War II, and he inspired this country in a lot of ways. Um, Teddy Roosevelt was just, that was a bad dude, you know what I mean? I mean <laughs> if I was ever in a bar fight, um, he's the guy I'd want with me. I mean, the, the man took a bullet to the chest and finished the speech. <laughs> um, you know, check out, if you haven't already, the... Um, the uh, the documentary Ken Burns documentary on the Roosevelt is really fascinating, really cool, um, cool story um, about Roosevelt. Um, you know, Teddy Roosevelt only became president because they were trying to um, silence him by making him vice president to McKinley. Um, I grew up in a town called Mineral Ridge, Ohio, which is about three miles from where William McKinley was born. And my wife's actually from Niles, which is William McKinley's hometown. Um, supposedly, according to newspaper articles I've read, uh, an uncle of mine, his name was Christian Hughes, um, built the house that William McKinley was born in. So that, that was pretty cool. And that's actually a book I'm writing on my family right now. Uh, it was something I talk about in there. Grant or Sherman? Hmm. I got to go with Grant, Nathan. But I like, I like them both. They're both Ohio boys, just like I am. Um, they both had their flaws, but both incredibly gifted as well. Um, I'd have to go with Grant, I think. Um, but I don't know. If I, if I had to pick one general for one battle, I might go with Sherman. Uh, let, let me see. Let me catch up on some of the other questions here. My favorite carrier, World War II era, got to go with Yorktown. Man, that thing, isn't that the one that almost got sunk and then they patched the thing together just in time to throw it out there for the back of, uh, midway and then it ends up getting sunk again? Um, so, yeah, Yorktown, man, that thing took a licking and kept on ticking. What got me hooked into PC gaming? Well, my PC gaming experience goes all the way back to the Commodore 64. Uh, and the game that really got me hooked into PC gaming was Red Storm Rising. It was the first uh, really good sub-sim. Um, and it's a lot like, I think, Cold Waters is a similar game today to Red Storm Rising. Uh, for the time period, it was just incredible. 
um, what they put into that game. It was a lot of fun. So Red Storm Rising was the first big one for me, and that really got me hooked. And I've been playing strategy games ever since. Um, let's see. Have I ever played the old PTO games? Yes. Yes, I have. Um, I can't remember if it was on Nintendo that I had um, uh, PTO, but Pacific Theater of Operations. Cool game. Really cool. Let's see. I'm scrolling down, just kind of catching up on questions here. Why are there so many shells? Because it's a 10 on 10 battle cruiser battle. Have I played Star Trek online? Yes, but not for a long time. Speaking of Star Trek, I actually watched Star Trek Generations this morning. Um, I was sitting working on my book that I'm, I'm writing on one of my families that actually was my family that came from Birmingham in the UK. And I was watching Star Trek Generations this morning. <laughs> the the JMP mod on the Union side is fixed. The Confederates fight hard. I could have anything named after me. What would it be? Wow. Oh boy. Um, I think a, I think an aircraft carrier is pretty awesome to have named after you. I can't think of anything bigger and better than that. Um, I, I hear they're going to name one after Dory Miller, who was the um, uh, well, he was portrayed by uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. in the movie Pearl Harbor. I know, I know, I'm not talking about Pearl Harbor as being a great work of historical accuracy. Uh, just probably the place that most people are going to know Dory Miller's story from. Hello, hello, Chumley. Hello, everybody who just joined. Um, let me catch up on questions here. We're doing a q and A. I'm not really paying much attention to the game at the moment. Uh, let's get back over here and take a look and see what's happening on the German side. Oh, boy. Germans have some damage going on to some of their ships here. Andrew Jackson. Okay. Uh, Andrew Jackson um, was, yeah, probably after um, Teddy Roosevelt would probably be the second toughest SOB to ever be president. Um, yeah. Andrew Jackson and, and uh, Teddy Roosevelt together on my side in a bar fight would be great. Um, Simple History just did a video on Teddy. I'll have to check that out, Nathan. That's cool. Sherman or Sherman? Lee or Jackson? Oh, boy. Um, oh, boy. Because I don't know. That's a tough one, Chumley, because I feel like either one of them without the other isn't as strong as the two of them together. Um, I feel like they complemented each other really well because Jackson probably was too bold and Lee maybe not bold enough at times. Um, I, I feel like they needed each other, but um, I don't know. I'd probably have to go with Jackson. Jackson's a fascinating character from West Virginia. I don't know if everybody knew that, but uh, yeah, he's from West Virginia. Uh, it's funny because he wasn't very liked as a professor at Virginia Military Institute. M1, A1, German or Sherman. <laughs> I would imagine it will be the USS Doris Miller because that was his full name was Doris. It would be interesting because um, Dory Miller would be the first um, carrier in quite a while that's not named after a U.S. president. Oh, speaking of the Battle of Britain, Imperial Europe, um, I don't remember. I'm trying to remember. I think Mission of Honor, I think it's called. Um, it's a. A movie. It's a couple years ago. It's got the guy who played. Um, oh, who's the guy from Game of Thrones? The one that everybody hated, Ramsey Bolton. Um, it's got that guy playing a Polish pilot. I didn't know this. Maybe some of you did, but the um, the most decorated, the most successful uh, aircraft squadron during the Battle of Britain was a squadron of Polish pilots um, who had to fight to be able to get the right to be able to serve in the RAF. Uh, so it's a story about them. Uh, and it was really cool. I think it's called Mission of Honor. Um, oh, my thoughts on Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> well, 
what's the movie date night where they say over and over again for the love of god put on an effing shirt uh yeah uh I like Mark Wahlberg. I, I prefer his brother Donnie because he was in Band of Brothers, which is one of my all-time favorite shows. Um, what about Andrew Jackson? Tough, tough guy. Maybe not the nicest guy. Maybe not the most stand-up quality human being ever. Uh, when I think of Andrew Jackson, I think of two things. I think of his campaign, which was probably one of the ugliest ever um, in his, American politics. Um, but also I think of when he decided to um, move all of the uh, Native Americans across the Mississippi over to what is now Oklahoma. And the U.S. Supreme Court said he couldn't do it. And he basically just said, okay, they made the ruling. Now let's see him enforce it. He just kind of ignored the law. He didn't care. Army Chow Mein, you start the bar hanging with Clinton. Okay, you know what? I get that. Um, Bill Clinton, I... I, um, I friend of mine who I actually work for um, knows Bill Clinton and uh, I think probably doesn't agree with him politically um, but speaks very highly of him as far as um, the kind of person like his kindness his compassion the kind of he's everything you think he is you know when you meet him uh, this is no reflection on his politics or on uh his um, kind of personal, like the kind of person he is, but everybody I've ever spoken to who has ever personally met Bill Clinton says he's a really nice guy and uh, makes you feel like the most important person in the room. So I could see wanting to hang out with him in a bar. Can I imagine naval warfare if both Washington and London treaties never happened? That would be interesting. Be a different world for sure. When do I think the next big update for UAD will be? Um, Wow, I hope it's a campaign, but I haven't heard anything. I was actually, just before we started this stream, I was over on their message boards reading, and somebody said that they typically have been, with the big alpha updates, been going like around the middle of the month every other month. So if they stay on that schedule, we probably have another big update coming in a couple of weeks, but I don't know. Did I know that the U.S. Army wanted to make aircraft carriers with Boeing 737s? Interesting. Imagine the seabed after this battle. Tens of thousands of shells littering the seabed and up to possibly 19 wrecks. Yeah. Country roads playing in your head. You're going to buy Age of Sales soon? Any tips? Um, I would say this. Trial and error. And don't watch my initial British series because the game's completely different now than it was then. Uh, they've completely revamped the research uh, and technology sections and things like that. But uh, just trial and error, man. I, you know, I still don't feel like I completely know what I'm doing. I still make a lot of mistakes. But you know, you got to find what works for you as far as your play strategy. Am I a fan of Tom Clancy? Yes. Um, I've never read any of the books, but I love the movies and the TV shows that have come out of it. Sudden Strike Four. Oh boy, I haven't played that. Yes, uh, a lot of the drew. Let's go take a look. We got one. First Bismarck is sinking over here. Oh, I hit the wrong buttons. It's still weird to me that E turns to the left and Q turns to the right on this game, so it kind of messes me up sometimes. Here's the Bayern. Red Storm Rising. Yes, great. Um, I, you know, one of my old... Uh, Hunt for Red October is one of my all-time favorite movies. I love that movie. Alabama is like Game of Thrones. Uh, let's see here. I'm, I'm, I'm still getting caught up on the chat here, so give me a few minutes. Bear with me, guys. Yes, I have the Band of Brothers box set also. You're right, it does look like a metal box. Uh, Smedley, you are right. I believe they fought in Poland and France even before they the... Survivors, the exiles from the Polish squadrons, got to England. My thoughts on the 1939 North Carolina battleships. Um, I like them. Uh, just build a couple on uh, Victory at Sea Pacific. Sorry, I got to check on the time real quick because I got to make sure that I'm off of here in time for. Oh, I got plenty of time. My my daughter's live streaming at uh, four o'clock, so or five o'clock. So I want to make sure that I'm done in time for her. Uh, so let's see, what all were the North Carolinas? Um, so 
So North Carolina and Washington were the two North Carolina class battleships. Um, are any of those still surviving? They they were, uh, they were succeeded by the uh, South Dakota class. I don't know. Is the North Carolina North Carolina still down there off the coast of North Carolina? Isn't it? Boy, the Bayern is just uh, listing big time now, isn't it? Yeah, Clinton probably would be a fun drunk. By the way, I, I have to admit, I'm kind of a fan of drunk history. It's fairly good history because some of it's just a little BS because the people are drunk. But it's still kind of entertaining. It's an interesting way to watch history, I guess. I'm just I'm still getting caught up on chat here. Yeah, Niall, you know what? My daughter, when she does live streams, she'll get 2,000 people in the live stream. And even if we turn on low, uh, slow chat, which means that people can only type a message once every um, minute or so, it still goes so fast that she hardly sees any of the messages. We try to help her out to catch them, but she doesn't always. Uh, Jabberjaw says, if you could change something in history, what would it be? Wow. Um, mm. That's a that's a really deep question. Oh, let me think about that for a minute. I'd go back. I'm thinking as an American now. I'd go back, and I don't know that this would have been possible. I'd go back to... 1789 when they were doing the constitutional convention here in the u.s or 1787 i guess it was and somehow convince those people to eliminate slavery i don't know how it would have been possible um because there's no way they could have gotten a constitution and, and kept the 13 states together um, by eliminating slavery uh, but if they'd done it then uh, the whole history of the united states could have been different um, secondly, along that same mindset, I think I would have gone back to the period after the American Civil War, uh, to 1876, when they ended Reconstruction, uh, and I would have stopped that from happening. I think ending Reconstruction was one of the most disastrous things that ever happened in America, uh, and it set our country up for another hundred years plus of just awful treatment of black people in the South, especially. Um, I think the whole, the whole country would have been a different place if reconstruction had been allowed to continue. Uh, I don't know how they would have gotten out of it eventually, but uh, that would be a big one for me. I think let's see. Well, I continue um, TTS. Total Tank Simulator, yeah. You know, at some point, probably v revisit it every so often. I don't know that it fits real great with what I do as a channel because it's, um, I mean, but it's got some his history to it. Maybe when the full game comes out, I'll probably revisit it. Maybe the campaigns or something. Um, this guy's not even really, that's the Hindenburg. Okay, cool. Let's see what's happening over here. How many ships we got left? We got seven, eight, nine. I guess uh, a good bit of the German fleet is still completely intact. The Italians uh, got most of theirs still intact too. All right. Let's see what. Um, My favorite destroyer, uh, World War II era. Uh, the next wrist stream. You want to play in it, Nelson? You know what? That that's a that brings up a great um, point that I want to make. Um, I really want to get into some more multiplayer gaming for the channel and include some of you guys in that. Um, and I'm also exploring doing some crossover series with some other YouTubers that are similar in size to me. I think I mentioned this recently, but um, I've had a chance. Um, to connect with uh, Tortuga Power and Agrippa Magzentius, who have channels similar in size to mine. 
Uh, both great guys had a chance. They've been helpful to me in my channel, and I want to be helpful to them. I'm, I'm a little bigger than, than their channel, not much. Um, and they just recently did a multiplayer uh, series playing Strategic Command World War One, And I think I might do something like that with one or both of those guys. Um, but we'll try to find some things we can do multiplayer-wise. Do I know much about California and how it came to be annexed by the U.S. Army? Can I do a series about it? Um, you know what, Jason? I've toyed with the idea of moving my non-gaming stuff to a separate channel. There's a lot of debate about how YouTube's algorithms work with this stuff. Um, and I found that my non-gaming stuff doesn't get a lot of views, like my visits to historic sites and things like that. So I've thought about moving all those videos over to another channel that would be connected to this one, uh, and then using that channel for some of those things. Um, like doing talks about history and stuff. Um, either that or doing it on this channel. Uh, but I thought about even just doing like this, like a live stream like this, but doing just having a specific topic in mind. Like, hey, today we're going to talk about um, the Bismarck. Or today we're going to talk about General Grant. Or we're going to talk about the Battle of Shiloh. Um, and then just have a conversation about that. Uh, so I have thought about those ideas. I don't know exactly how or what I, I'm going to choose to do with any of that yet. Um, anyway, back to uh, question. Hey, nobody asked about favorite destroyer. Um, probably the one that anybody would say. But I'm a Fletcher fan. I think the Fletcher was... Uh, a great innovation and obviously it uh, did a lot to help with uh, winning World War II. Um, and I'm catching up on chat. Uh, William Jenks, I, I know it didn't do well at the box office, but I'm a big fan of Hunter Killer with Gerard Butler. I'm a big fan of Gerard Butler in general. My wife says he's one of my man crushes, if there is such a thing. But uh, yeah, I like that movie a lot. Make the worst ship in Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought. Boy, there's so many ways to do with that to go with that. Um, kill Stalin or Hitler? Oh, got to kill Hitler. Uh, Stalin was awful too, and Stalin probably killed more of his own people. Um, sorry, guys, if, if I miss your question. Uh, feel free to type it again because uh, I'm, I'm trying to catch up. I'm way behind on the chat right now. You know, a fascinating thing about a lot of these people like Stalin, Hitler, um, Khrushchev, a lot of them have American relatives. Um, Stalin's granddaughter is an American. Uh, his daughter became a, a U.S. citizen later in life. Stalin's daughter did. Uh, incidentally, if you want to it's kind of vulgar um, and not necessarily incredibly historically accurate, but you want a fun movie to watch, watch The Death of Stalin. I think it's on Netflix. Um, it's pretty It's pretty funny. Um, but Adolf Hitler's nephew became an American. Uh, Khrushchev's son, I think, is an American. All right, let's get back to He said Germans are out of 8-inch ammo. Yeah, it seems like they stopped firing those. Yeah, I think the Italians are, are losing this fight, though. A lot of these ships are close to being done. Let's go back and look at the... Yeah, see, a lot of these German ships haven't even been touched yet. All right, let's see. Am I going to do videos of Grand Tactician? Absolutely. 100% guaranteed you will see videos of Grand Tactician on this channel. Uh, Tortuga does Atlantic Fleet. Yes, he does. Let's see. Strategic Command World War One. Yeah, we're going to get to that at some point. Hey, nobody. Gotcha. Um, yeah, please do. Go ahead and mention me in that. Um, you said you're going to do that on um, Discord. Let's see.
So I'll probably, if I do decide to make, uh, to do a separate channel with that, and I actually already kind of created one and uploaded a couple of the videos to it, but haven't done much with it since. Um, let's see. What do I think was one of the most revolutionary handheld weapons or techs of warfare? Steel armor, the longbow. Um, you could probably make an argument for every single one of those things you just mentioned, Army Chow Main. Uh, the longbow stands out to me. Uh, just because of, you know, things like the Battle of Agincourt. But, um, boy, I don't know if I could pick one. Every every war has technology that changed the face of that war. You could talk about the mini ball during the American Civil War. You could talk about, you said, smokeless powder. You could talk about um, steel. Um, you could talk about bronze being introduced into things. Who would win America and China in a war? Nobody. Nobody would win that war. Uh, it would be a loss for the entire world if that ever happened, and I hope it doesn't. Uh, yes, Hitler's nephew did serve in the U.S. military. I think he was in the Navy. There were 170-plus Fletcher-class destroyers. I had no idea there were that many. My favorite video game company. Oh, boy. Um, kind of kind of got to go Game Labs right now, don't I? I mean, the two most successful games I've had on this channel have been Ultimate Admiral and Ultimate General. So I guess I, I feel like I have to say them. Um, Matrix Games is my favorite website for getting uh, games from. Because they've got all—I mean, every game on that on that website is my kind of game. Uh, Ewan, I, I believe you are correct about that. Uh, the longbow could pierce plate armor, I believe. Oh, I think the Roman army could have dominated for a long time to come because uh, there were no huge advances in, in advances in technology for a long time after the Roman Empire kind of ceased to exist. Yeah, pole arms were huge, Jason. You're right at the time. Take care, Jason. Or uh, Jason. Uh, take care, James. Micropros. Yes, Micropros is who did Hunt for or, um, Red Storm Rising. Uh, they also had um, Airborne Ranger was one of my favorite games as a kid. Now, I'll stop whipping the stakes around, my friend. Fair point, uh, Pavlo, about the German scientists. We definitely used their ideas. For those of you who uh, may not have been here at the top, I just want to, uh, once again, now that I'm caught up on chat, mention a couple things. We did have another giveaway winner for Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Um, so there's a new contest, and the link is in the description of this live stream, and it'll be in the description for the future Ultimate uh, Admiral videos. Um, so you can enter that, and when we hit 21,000 subs, we'll give that away. It's been about every three weeks or so, uh, so I would expect that'll be the case again. Um, made a bunch of updates to the Patreon rewards, and uh, if you are a member here on YouTube... Um, at one of those levels, I'm going to update that as well to reflect the same levels uh, of rewards. Uh, so I'll be doing that as soon as this live stream is over. So check that out. If you have been a patron for a while, you might see some changes to the rewards that are available at your level. You might need to reach out to me about those things. Um, and then the other thing is uh, Andrew, who has been a longtime patron and supporter of this channel, although I haven't seen him today. Um, he's usually here in the live streams. He's been asking me for months if I would do a uh, Amazon wish list. I don't know how those work, and I felt kind of hesitant to do that, but I did create one. I just put a couple of things on there that I could use for the channel, um, and the link's in the description as well for that. So I don't know how that all works or even if it will work, but there you have it. Anyway, um, no, Stalin was not Russian. Um, 
Pavel. He was Georgian, so he was Soviet, but he wasn't Russian. Brian, very cool. How's Banner Lords going for you? I got to get back to that game. It's not real popular on this channel, so that's why I've kind of slowed down. I'm going to get into a regular rotation with the videos, and I'll probably be posting that in the next day or two uh, with kind of the schedule for the week, and that's subject to change, but to at least kind of give you an idea of when the next videos for the different series will be coming. What historical battle would I least like to fight in? Wow, Josh, that's an interesting question. Um, the Battle of Towton. It was during the English War of the Ro Wars of the Roses. Uh, that was not only a long battle, it was a bloody battle, but you had a really good chance of dying horribly. Um, that's the first one that comes to mind for me, the Battle of Towton. What do I think about the Queen Elizabeth class? Honestly, I... I don't know enough about it to be able to get a fair opinion of that. I, I like anything British. Brian, I'm glad. Uh, you know, sometimes you can learn from people's successes as well as their failures. So if you learned anything at all, one way or the other from my videos, then I'm glad. Uh, Nelson, I think the reason Banner Lord's not popular on my channel is because it's so popular as a game that there's a lot of places you can go to get that content. Uh, and a lot of people are far better at the game and have far bigger channels than I do. So I would guess that's probably why it doesn't get a lot of views on my channel. Verdun, uh, Army Chow Main, that's a, that's a good one. Too. A lot of those World War, World War One battles would be places I probably wouldn't want to be. Do I play park building games? Not really, um, but I play a lot of city building games. Um, I got into Theme Park Tycoon a while back, uh, for a while, but that was before I started the channel. Victor, welcome. Hello. Where are you watching from? Hey, in fact, everybody, go ahead and say it again. Tell us uh, what city, what country you're watching from. I always love to see that. I haven't played Diablo for a long time, William, um, but I have played it in the past. I got really into the original Diablo when it came out. That's the first game I thought of when somebody mentioned Blizzard uh, as a game company. Hey, Niall, take care. Do I do models, Victor? Um, I used to. I haven't for a while. The last one I did was the USS Arizona uh, after I visited the Arizona um, in Hawaii. You and where are you in Scotland? That's one, um, one of the places I most want to visit. Oh, we've got Iowa, Minneapolis. Uh, last time, William, I was in Minnesota. I was up in, um, oh, what was the name of the town I was in? It was right on Lake Superior. Um, it's it's right where the Mississippi River starts, and I was up there, and I, I saw the Mississippi River, and it was it was like wide enough almost to jump over. Ecuador, very cool. Marin County, California, Washington State. Hey, nobody watching from Hungary. My wife's uh, grandpa's home country. He was from Sao Saint Peter. Oh, we got somebody in London. Awesome. Brian, out in Pennsylvania? I've been there quite a few times. I spoke at um, Richland High School. I think that's over near Johnstown.
Denmark, Sarasota. Very cool. What if during World War II the USSR joined France and Britain against Hitler? Well, they kind of... Oh, you mean earlier in the war. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, probably would have ended sooner. Oh, William, that was you who mentioned Blizzard. Okay, that makes sense. Call of Duty, Korean War. You know, the Korean War just doesn't get remembered as much as it should. My my grandpa's brother fought in Korea, and it really changed him. And, and unfortunately, it was definitely a forgotten war. Lewiston, Idaho. Beautiful area up there in Idaho. I was in Coeur d'Alene a, a few months back. So I saw somebody who was from Scotland. I, I forget who it was. I'd have to check up. But where are you from, Scotland? I'm going to speed this up a little bit just so we can see how the, the battle ends up. I'm going to kind of back up. Let's go over and look back over at the, the Italians for a little bit. They're going to run out of ammo before they defeat each other, it seems. The Italians, these guys still got a lot of 8-inch uh, eight, eight ammo left. All right, I'm just checking on the time here. I want to wrap. I'm going to wrap this up probably in about 15 or 20 minutes because I want to give time for my daughter to uh, get ready for her live stream. So if you guys have any other questions, go ahead and throw them out there. About anything doesn't have to be history. Yeah, they, I, I will. I will be shocked if the next big update for this game doesn't include the quad turrets. Do I know Oregon, Ohio? No. Um, what part of Ohio is that in? What if Hood sunk Prin, uh, Bismarck and Prince Oregon? I'm not sure that would would have happened, um, but it would have saved a lot of lives. That's for sure. Yeah, I think the Germans are getting low on their main ammo. My thoughts on Woodrow Wilson? Um, I don't have a lot of positive ones. <laughs> the guy was a, a big-time racist, uh, and I disagree with a lot of his politics, and I'll probably just leave it at that. And he probably wasn't even running the country the last two years he was in office. I think his wife was. I'm not a fan of Woodrow Wilson, if you, if you could. What would a one versus one me and what Yamato look like? Oh, I could take it out. Just got to build the right ship. The Japanese use German fire control radars on the Yamato. Interesting. I did not know that. Quad gun. I don't know. I, I, I'm sure they'll have quad guns. I'm not sure they're going to have 20-inch guns. Uh, so, Jason, uh, before all the Rona, um, I actually, and then Josh actually asked me about Rachel's challenge. So um, this, this story will take a couple minutes, so apologies if you type a chat. I might not see it for a couple of minutes. Um, I mentioned way earlier that I spent a long time. I actually spent 14 years as a youth pastor. My first year in youth ministry uh, was when the Columbine shooting happened in 1999 out in Little, Littleton, Colorado. So it was one of my first experiences in working with teenagers was the aftermath of what was at the time by far the worst school shooting in American history. Um, and I remember watching the funeral of this young girl. Her name was Rachel Joy Scott. Uh, she was the first person who was killed at Columbine. Her family was on TV, and it was actually the most watched event 
in uh, CNN history to that point. It had the highest ratings ever in CNN's history. Uh, and I was just blown away by the story of this girl. And about a year later, uh, her mom and dad wrote a book called Rachel's Tears, and it told the story of Rachel's life. And it's more than I can get into on here right now. But uh, I found myself looking up to this 17-year-old girl that I'd never met as one of my heroes. Uh, she just had an amazing story. She seemed like an incredible human being, uh, loved people no matter who they were, no matter what they believed, um, and tried to treat everybody with kindness. And uh, so I just started writing music about that time, and I wrote a song uh, about her. Uh, that was, I don't know, 16, 17 years ago. And my daughter was born in 2005. It was our first, she was our firstborn child. She's going to be 15 in July. And we decided to name her Rachel Joy after this girl we never met, Rachel Joy Scott, who was killed at Columbine. Now, fast forward many years later, 2014, my daughter's nine years old, and I get an opportunity to audition to be a national speaker for this organization called Rachel's Challenge which was founded by Rachel Scott's family as a way of spreading her message of kindness and compassion. Rachel wrote, she kept these journals, these incredible journals that just gave all this incredible insight into her life. And um, one of the things she talked about, it, it, not only in her journals, but in an essay she wrote for one of her classes, was her belief in what she called a chain reaction of compassion and kindness. She believed that every time you show compassion to a person, show kindness to a person, that that has a ripple effect and could affect the lives of people you will never meet. And so now I'm one of dozens of people who travel all over the country speaking in schools, actually all over the world, speaking in schools and sharing Rachel's story as a way of inspiring young people to treat one another with kindness and compassion. And it's amazing to see uh, the, the response. Uh, I've had so many kids come up to me, hand me suicide notes, tell me they were going to change their life and start treating each other better. Uh, it's just a remarkable organization to be a part of. And so uh, I actually had some events that were canceled. Um, I did an event in Boston the week that everything started shutting down. And uh, my events after that have all been canceled. I'm hoping we'll be able to get back at it in the fall. Um, so that's kind of one of the main things that I do. Uh, I also do music in nursing homes, which also has been shut down. Uh, I go and play for the residents, go around to the rooms, the people who can't come out and hear me in the cafeteria or wherever I play. Um, I also uh, preach and lead worship at a church on Sunday mornings. Uh, right now we're doing those on online. Uh, so I'm doing church from my from my kitchen every Sunday morning. Um, so that's kind of uh, what I do right now. I'm also in school getting my degree in history. Uh, all right, let me catch up on chat. Yeah, so um, so with that in mind, uh, somebody asked how I got involved. Well, I uh, because I had named my daughter after Rachel, I had reached out years and years ago to her family uh, through their organization's website and connected with her dad. And he would always ask me to email pictures of my daughter and tell him a little bit about her um, since she was named after his daughter. And uh, so I kind of connected with him a little bit. But when I started working for them was when I really got to know them. Uh, and know the family and um, Rachel's two sisters and her two brothers Bethany Dana Mike and Craig are some of my dearest friends they're incredible human beings every one of them uh, I, I just love that family to do, I would do absolutely anything for them uh, and it's just amazing to see how they've taken this horrible tragedy that's happened in their lives and turned it into something that helps thousands and thousands of kids all over the world um, okay, so um, Nathan has a question about that. Could those two guys have been talked out of doing that? Um, oh, boy. You know, I, I hesitate to speak for what other people would do. Um, I would like to think maybe, but I know Rachel had reached out to them and tried to befriend them, so I don't know. I think there were some mental illness issues there that maybe if someone had intervened, it could have been different, but um, I don't know. catch back up on chat here if I miss anything you said please say it again oh Nelson um yeah we'll try to organize a uh, a multiplayer I'll, I'll make like a private 
one sometime. And uh, um, make sure that you subscribe and hit that little bell um, next to the subscribe button notifications because that way if I post something uh, like in the community section on the channel you'll get a notification about that because sometime maybe we'll just create a uh, create a, uh, a risk game and maybe live stream it or maybe just record it to play later and maybe I'll create like a private server for some of you guys to join and we can play So 08S Hunter, um, you're in London. What part of London are you in? And thank you for that. I appreciate that. Right, almost a little uh, collision there. I like the German hulls. I like that kind of tapered look in the front, that narrow area that they have there. Oh, these Italian chips are going after the Hindenburg big time. I don't know. The Italians might... Nah, they're not going to win. There's still a lot of German ships left. Wow, Hindenburg's getting lit up. T owns the world. <laughs> so let me guess, Nelson. You like Earl Grey? I could never get into it. I just didn't think it was very good. Oh, southeast part of London. Interesting. Vodka is the true thing. Interesting. All right, we'll go for a couple more minutes here. We'll try to get this battle resolved before we wrap it up. Marvin, thank you. The Italians winning anything is an affront to history. <laughs> well, I mean, if you think of Italians as being the Romans, they did pretty good for a while. What are my thoughts on the Kaiser? I'm, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm a closet monarchist all the way around. Um, so I kind of like the idea of hereditary monarchy, although I see that it's not a very wise form of government. I guess if you have a constitutional monarchy where the Kaiser didn't have all the power, that would have been cool to see the Hohenzollerns continue at least, um, to represent the German people, maybe as head of state, kind of, you know, kind of like they do in the UK. Cheap win because. <laughs> yeah, the Italians were a little bit fickle, weren't they, when it comes to World War One and World War Two. Jason, yeah, um, we can try to do more things like that. And maybe the way to go with my next live streams are to do things that are um, more plausible or uh, turn-based type games, things that I can kind of pay attention without sacrificing gameplay. Von Schrader, The Line of Bismarck. Very cool. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, all the kings and queens of Europe were the same family. What are some of my favorite documentaries? Um, love the... Uh, Ken Burns Civil War, that was the one that really got me into history in the first place. Um, what else? The World War II in color is pretty cool. I like that one. Um, 
it does a pretty good job of covering the entire war from start to finish. There was one that was really good recently. I think it was on Netflix that I saw about um, Hitler's circle of evil or something like that. That one was pretty good. Um, trying to think of what else on the lighter side of things i like oversimplified i think his stuff's pretty cool and uh is entertaining and also shares a lot of information at the same time if you've never checked out oversimplified on youtube i like his stuff it's pretty good oh is atlantic fleet fleet stern, uh, turn base good to know that was nicholas the second that bad as a czar yes the man was completely tone deaf to what was happening in his country. Um, I mean, I think his grandfather, was it his father and his grandfather? I mean, there was been, been a bunch of assassinations in their family in the 1800s. Uh, it, he just, if he had listened at all to his people, he could have stayed on the throne. Um, but yeah, he was, he was bad. Uh, Imperial Europe. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think anybody can send me, private messages on discord nazis on drugs i saw a little bit about that are you talking about um they were on basically meth weren't they during the invasion of france hey nobody that's interesting jason that's really interesting too i do think it was kind of uh kind of awful by um, King George V and his family not to let the Romanovs have asylum in Britain especially since they were family I mean shoot King, King George V and Nicholas II were first cousins and they were practically twins they looked so much like each other Alexander II, that's who I was thinking of that was assassinated. Yeah, Jason, I would agree. Nicholas II was, a, was a, a decent human being, but he was a terrible czar. All right, let's see what's happening with this. The Hessen's about to go down. I don't know. Might the Italians pull this off after all? I think they might. Yeah. Um, Wilhelm II was actually Queen Victoria's oldest grandchild, uh, or oldest grandson. Uh, so, yeah, he and King George were cousins. Um, I think Kaiser Wilhelm's mother was Victoria, um, and then Victoria and Edward the Seventh were brother and sister. Um, so George V and Kaiser Wilhelm were cousins on that side. And then I think the Tsarina of Russia was also a grandchild of Queen Victoria. I'm trying to remember. And then Nicholas was a cousin to George V through their mothers, I think. If I could go back and pull a prank on any one historical figure, who and what? Oh, boy. Um, dang. That's a tough one. I wouldn't do it to Abraham Lincoln because, I don't know if you know this, Abraham, I've actually thought about doing a, a video on this. Abraham Lincoln's in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. He was like 301 as a wrestler. Um Apparently a really, really good wrestler. Um, down to three Germans now. Um, wow. I don't know. I'd have to think about that one. Jason, that's interesting. The level is off to check that. Yeah, we're going to wrap this up in just a couple of minutes. Uh, this one, I'm going to speed this up because I want to see how, how this fight ends up. Two sides allied in Axis to make a chat for both sides in the second chat for Warzone. Interesting. 
pull down Hitler's pants? <laughs> have I studied the Abyssinian crisis? No, I have not. Well, Black Bomber, I don't know if the U.S. getting into World War One was the worst thing in the world because um, they came in just as the Russian front collapsed. So I wonder how things might have been different. Because if the Americans hadn't entered the war, I wonder if the Germans would have had that disastrous offensive late in the war that would have led to their collapse. All right, we're going to speed this up to five times just because we have to see a resolution. We have to see what happens here. Is it three on three? It is. Oh, that one's about to be gone. Eh, the Germans might win this after all. Imperial Europe. That's a good point about Serbia. <laughs> Poor Nelson. He's getting beat up on right now. Yeah, World War One. if you think about it, U.S. enters in 1917. They don't really get into combat until 1918. But without the U.S., the Germans have, I think, a real chance of winning that war still because um, their Eastern Front collapses, and so it really becomes a one-front war. And if they, can, if they can focus on that front without having to worry about the Americans coming into the war, I'm not sure it would have ended the same way. I mean that was a big infusion of two, I think the I think the Americans sent 2 million troops to the western front uh, into 1918 I've been studying World War 1 a lot lately um in this book that I mentioned I'm writing um one of my aunts had four grandsons who died in the British army three of them were in the same unit uh they were in the um the Sherwood Foresters, the um, the the one five of the Sherwood Foresters, and three of them died in that in that unit. Three cousins, two brothers, and a cousin. The fake bear prank on Teddy. I think that's a good way to get yourself killed, Army Chowney. What would be the cause of World War Three? Oh boy! Wow. I hope there isn't one, but I think I'm naive to think there won't be one at some point. Um, oh, wow. I don't know. Somehow it's got to involve China, though, doesn't it? I would think. Yeah. What do we got left? The Germans have two ships over there. The Hansa is about to be toast. I can't believe that this one is still floating. It almost looks like a paint scheme, all the scorch marks. Donald Trump mooning Kim Jong-un. Well, Kim Jong-un, I, I don't think, is long for this world if he's even still alive. I think he's about to be weekend at Bernie's. They're going to be, like, propping him up. Uh, I read a rumor somewhere that his uncle has taken power in Pyongyang, has arrested the sister that everybody thinks is going to take over. I don't know if it's, any of it's true. It's going to be fascinating to watch what happens in North Korea. Wouldn't that be something if whoever comes to power, if it's all true, actually works towards reunification? That would be amazing. Oh, i got to catch up. There's a lot of chat happening right now. Hold on a second here. 
Peaky Blinders, Jason. Yes, because my family being from Birmingham, I found myself really wanting to see what Birmingham was like at that time. So, yeah, I've been watching that. There goes the Hansa. What's up with this one way back here? No, USA did not sign that treaty. But w Wilson did work f work toward getting that treaty. But we didn't ratify it. Yeah, I've read that too. Hey, nobody, that's about right. How old am I, Kaiser Wilhelm II? I am 42. Yeah, Wilson, you're right, uh, Imperial Europe. Wilson would never have been elected if the Republicans hadn't split their ticket that year. Um, Taft was, and I hate to say this because... Taft's an Ohio guy. Great grandson was our governor not too many years ago. Um, Taft was Roosevelt's kind of hand-picked successor, but then Roosevelt didn't like the direction that Taft went, and so he tried to get the nomination from Taft, didn't win it, ran as a third party, split the Republican vote, and voila, you get Woodrow Wilson. It's interesting that in the U.S. some of the most consequential elections have happened because the other side split the, t the vote. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was elected because the Democrats split their ticket into multiple um, candidates. Uh, Bill Clinton got elected because Ross Perot ran and siphoned off a lot of votes from George Bush. Um, so that's happened quite a few times in our history. All oh, the monarchas out of 14 and 8 inch shells. Let's see. So is the Ostmark. This may not end because nobody's got the shells to sink anybody. This may just be how this ends up. Taft is thick. Yes, he is. All right, so I think we're going to probably have to just wrap this up unless this other... No, nobody's got any big shells left. So I don't think this is going to end anytime soon, unfortunately. Oh, wow. Actually, you know what? Those five inch shells kind of did some damage there. Let's do this. Let's take control and go ram these guys, or at least go right up next to them. Interesting, Jason. Yes, there was a story coming about uh, Taft getting stuck in the tub. This is like, yeah, at this point it is the Monitor versus the Merrimack. Wish I could get it going faster than three times speed. Gonna try to ram this guy, but I think we're gonna miss him. Maybe we'll try to ram the other one. It never works real well, ramming. Ends up causing way more damage to your own ship. Oh, look at this. We're just pummeling this guy with hits that are doing nothing. Look at all the ricochets going up right now. Yeah, Damien's back. I think they will add quad turrets to the game. All right, I'm going to wrap it up right here, guys. I've got to give my daughter a chance to get ready for her live stream that starts in 20 minutes. So thank you. That was a lot of fun. Thank you for celebrating 20,000 subscribers with me. 
Uh, I, I very much view this as our channel, not my channel. Oh, we are going to get a ram here. I'm just going to sink the Monarca. It's not going to do anything to him. Um, this is a community effort. This is all of us. And uh, this would not be possible without of all, all of you, which is why I love these live streams so much. So thank you so much. Make sure you check out the links in the description. And we'll be back again uh, with a lot more content this week. Have a great week, everybody.